Hello, my loves. Welcome back to Bahati Life Podcast. My name is Jessica Alexandria. I'm the creator and head witch behind Bahati Life Apothecary, professional astrologer, tarot, and intuitive reader. Thank you so much for hanging out with me once again here on the podcast. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, welcome back. Honestly, it's always an honor to be able to sit and vibe with you every week or every other week or every other other week because you guys know my schedule can be kind of crazy and 2022 and 2023 have been and will be the years of balance for me and I guess reform and also there's one word oh sustain sustaining what can we sustain those are my power words curious to hear what you guys' power words are for 2022 and 2023 please let me know on Twitter Instagram or any of your favorite social media platforms. So, how are we doing? How are we feeling? I have the chart pulled up for the week ahead of us. It is January 23rd, 4.56 that I'm recording this, and then I'm gonna go live for you guys a little later on for Astro Chat Live, which we do every Monday for the most part. So I'll see you guys there. If um, if you'll be tuning in, or if you want to, you can catch the replay, the recap. <clears throat> but I do have the chart pulled up here. So let's go ahead and dive into some of the main themes that I can see that I think are very important that I want you to be aware of. That way you can know what to expect for this week ahead and the weeks and months ahead of us because there have been some major changes that have been initiated and will be initiated this week. First things first, I want to talk to you guys about the lingering energies that came from last week, which was the Aquarius new moon. This is energy that is currently unfolding. Although a lot of us witches and intention setters, we like to use the night or the day of the new moon or the full moon to work our intentions. I honestly believe that you can continue to carry on your intentions or to manifest if you haven't already simply by writing petitions or putting out a prayer or some good vibes, some good energy, some good juju for yourself, for others, or other things that is that you want to bless at this time in your life. Aquarius, if you don't know, actually rules our ability to look into the future. And looking at the astrological chart, the future has had this huge question mark in front of it. This is something that has made a lot of people anxious because if you don't know what to expect, then there's this natural fear of the unknown that kind of settles into our spirit and settles into our bones. The reality is, is that when we are facing anything that's unknown, really what it is, is potential. As a manifester and as someone who magnetizes and attracts energy, which you inevitably will and are doing, whether you realize it or not, you can change your vibe or do certain things to enhance your vibe so what you're attracting kind of matches what is that you see for yourself so you're co-creating with the universe the future that you wish to create i hope that makes sense so with the aquarius new moon there might be a question mark ahead of you but that question mark is more of a question of what do you see and want for yourself And whatever that looks like for you, that divinely inspired image or vision is something that spirit can kind of trickle its energy and spice, you know, spice up your intuition and your, your imagination. And did I say inspiration already, but essentially like inspire you into this greater glistening image and vision of what you could life could look like or things that you can feel or things that you're open and willing now to explore things that you would normally not really tap into aquarius is huge on exploring uncharted territory and in order to do that sometimes we have to really truly break free of our comfort zone that's the blessing about aquarius energy is that aquarius does not shy away from the unknown it actually kind of dives into it (laughs) Um, for the sake of like this bigger purpose or to help humanity or to just have something different and fresh happening within your life. So that's the first thing that I want to start off talking with you guys about that yes the new moon was last week but I want to encourage you to continue to manifest with it if you haven't already or to continue to set your sights or your mind open your mind a little further and more on how to encourage more I guess more depth in 
the things that it is that you could explore or that could open up for you these new fresh doors that can open up for you also i will say that after a new moon the moon starts building up again into a new into a full moon so if you wanted to kind of lean into witchcraft or if you wanted to lean into manifestation techniques working with the moon and lunar energies a, a moon that is growing in size and growing in fullness will also bring in the growth and those blessings and the growth and the things that is that you're setting intention for. A lot of you guys are using the internet, social media, social networking and exploring your communities, exploring things around you in order to promote or make aware of your certain goals and ambitions and I really see that coming to life even more. I want to talk to you guys about the fact that Uranus rules the energy of Aquarius. For those of you guys that don't know, Uranus is the planet that connects us to erratic, unpredictable changes, strokes of luck, and it's always thinking about the future and and progressing things forward, especially when it comes to technology or anything that advances us as human humankind. Uranus has been retrograde since August 24th of last year, and basically when Uranus is transiting retrograde through the sign of Uranus, so it's kind of taking steps backwards to the sign of Uranus, we really see even more unpredictable swings in business and finances and things of value that are monetary value, things that we can put our hands on, um, little tiny investments that can kind of like pay off hopefully in the long, the long run, but you kind of have to choose that wisely, pick and choose with that. Um, also the value of land will swing up and swing down and swing up and swing down and we'll also see really interesting news developments when it comes to our economy because these are the things that the second house kind of naturally rules so just taking a look back we saw that the the US has been talking more seriously and openly about the idea of a recession which clearly right like clearly we already kind of knew that, but they weren't announcing it. So when Uranus went retrograde, they were kind of like, okay, we got to backtrack, retrace our steps, and maybe have this conversation once again, especially that Mercury was retrograde. Mercury is currently direct. I'm just saying that when Mercury was retrograde, retrograde in the sign of Saturn, this is when our government, which Saturn rules, then has this conversation, which Mercury rules communication about, okay, yeah, let's go ahead and have a serious uh, dialogue with the people of of this place of this area that yeah a recession is something that's looming that we're in or walking into whatever verbiage they used the truth is, is that it was a discussion of some sort about money and spending of the economy and also of the land also don't be surprised if you hear things about material goods um resources that come from the earth for example oil um uh, livestock um produce those types of things that get called into question when we are traipsing through the energy of Taurus energy as a whole and when we have Uranus which is so random and full of surprises just kind of like throwing grenades here and there yeah what do you think is going to happen we're going to not be able to uh what is it we're not going to be able to predict the price of strawberries <laughs> those are things that is that we'll see um also the price of real estate starts to like go up and down swing really really crazy so this week, Uranus actually starts to move direct. This is going to be on January 22nd, which actually technically this was Sunday, but I'm, because it's to the 23rd that it is that I'm talking to you guys about this um, through the podcast and through YouTube, um, the energy is just so strong this week at the very start of this week. We're going to be feeling it all this week. So... Yeah, Uranus now moving direct in sign of Taurus. Continue to see those swings when it comes to land development, when it comes to livestock, when it comes to produce, when it comes to resources of the earth, when it comes to our finances, our spending, and more importantly, I guess, maybe not important, but, but more intimately, what is actual a value to you now? What is a value to you guys now? So how are you spending your money? How are you spending your resources? Are you spending them at all? Because as I'm looking at the astrological chart, I do see a really strong desire to fall into, lean into the idea of minimalism, simplicity. And we went from wanting to be outrageous in our spending and 
you know, try new things and pioneer new things and, you know, not trying to hoard, but who can get the new, the greatest, the best first when Uranus was transiting through the sign of Aries. Now, all of a sudden, we're like, you know what? Maybe let's kind of be a little bit more conservative. Let's be a little bit more practical. And let's also start investing the small amount of money that we have in things of greater, higher quality that show proven results and evidence that it's going to make us more beautiful, make us more attractive, things that are have more value and more comfort to them. It's, it's definitely more quality versus quantity as a society as a whole all over the world. So we saw a huge change and shift within that. And also within social media, it's a lot uh, less is more, but higher quality, higher quality. So people are more willing to invest in more quality things instead of having all the latest things they want. And even if you do have all the latest things that you ventured out to, to purchase in the last few months, few years, I really see that you might be considering giving them to secondhand stores, passing them on to siblings, friends, and the, and things of that nature because you really want to start simplifying. You want to find things that actually work for you and that you can not only invest in them, but you can see yourself using them for the rest of your life. That's some real serious energy that's going on in the astrological chart. Not only the things that it is that we can put our hands on, but also just everything as a whole like our friendships our connections the food that is that we're eating everything is more and an, a microscope on the quality and longevity and comfort and just looking out for yourself um also there's a, a tie to more comfort than ostentatious in your face loud look at me type of energy it's way more comfort cozy and um I can attest to that like even now as I'm shooting this podcast for you guys I'm recording it for my YouTube channel but I'm I'm in my hoodie right now and to be honest with you I got this hoodie secondhand so it's super cozy could have paid more for it but guess what I didn't why because Uranus transits through the sign of Taurus are influencing me as well okay as above so below we're all under the same umbrella of stars in the sky so of course I'm under the influence of it too so moving on to the rest of the week you guys um sun sextile jupiter is happening the 24th sun is transiting through the sign of uranus of course jupiter is transiting through aries so <clears throat> what i can see right now is big time like using I, i'm i'm really seeing like big time using your voice your platform in order to uh, make really interesting, influential connections and put yourself out there. I'm also seeing a lot of you guys are looking into increasing your aura, your energy, your vibe, making sure that you have like more positive, high energy vibe. For some reason, this is going to be something that's going to be so important and valuable to you. It's how you put yourself first. And even as the sun is transiting through the sign of Uranus, this is about vibration as a whole. This is about you putting yourself first and making sure that I don't want to say the things that make you different, but like making sure that you have everything that you need in order to self-expand, self-grow, feel good about yourself, feel confident. It's all about really like, it's almost like a body scan. Like you're doing a body scan of yourself. Um, your Aquarius energy as a whole, I very much see it as like electrical scan of information and things. It's like a, a full on energetic scan of yourself the sun represents the actual self the physical body and jupiter is that knowledge falling in aries a sign of self as well so i'm just seeing a lot of you guys self-scanning in order to assess what your your energy your vibe what is it that you how you can do things better are you feeling strong and stabilized in this area if not i see yourself i see you pulling yourself out of situations that don't serve you when before you may have tolerated it this is not just relationships, but it's also businesses, career paths, school. These are things that you are deviating from those old paths and kind of going your own way, kind of paving your own way, which honestly I really like for society, so I feel very encouraged by that. However, if you are trying to talk to anybody of the old generations about this, they're not going to be able to understand it. 
If you are someone of a newer generation, but you're uncomfortable with the fact that you might be shifting out of these old mindsets, you might be uncomfortable with this and you might not be able to understand it however you feel it. The younger generation might just say, you know what, I don't want to tolerate this anymore. I don't want to break my back for this company that doesn't value me. I want to put myself first and find something that is significant for me and feels good for me. If not, I'm not doing it. This is a huge um, emphasis on people that are quitting or saying, you know what, enough is enough. I don't want this. Find someone else to do it. But the truth is, is that good luck trying to find someone else to do it because they might, they may find themselves facing the same type of energies and questions like, uh-uh, this is not a vibe for me, so I don't want to do it. So it keeps getting passed on, passed on. So basically what this ends up doing is initiating major change, Pluto transiting through the sign of Saturn at the very last degrees. It ends up initiating major change in, in, in as far as how corporations and foundations, is it healthy or is it unhealthy? Is it toxic or is it a place for you to thrive? It's because society as a whole, especially the younger generations, are demanding some major change simply by not showing up. <laughs> that is so inspiring. I'm also seeing in relationships, more intimate relationships, so partnerships, love, friendships, etc., etc. Some of you guys are needing a little bit more space than normal. And if it's not space from each other that is that you need or this sense of low tolerance for bullshit, I'm seeing that as a couple, if you have a healthy, happy relationship, that you are exploring new things, new territories together. I love that. Especially as Venus is going to be directly conjunct Uranus on the 26th. On the 27th, Mercury, the planet of communication, is going to be squaring off with Chiron, who is also in the sign of Aries. This is going to inspire major moments of cathartic healing. Is that a double entendre? I'm not sure. But this is going to exp um, inspire major moments of cathartic healing and conversation. Especially when it comes to your values, your boundaries. I'm seeing a lot of you guys saying to yourself, I don't feel like sacrificing too much of myself for any type of relationship. This is what I'm learning and discovering about myself. You also might be mentally coming to a point, like a breaking point, where you realize, you know, this is new, new for me, but I don't want this, or I need this, or this is what I'm about now, or this is what I require. And if you don't find a match in that or a compliment in that, I feel like I don't see you budging in it. Where does this energy, I'm curious, where does this energy fall for you in your chart? Guys, if you can, let me know by pulling your natal chart um, and checking your ascendant sign. I would like to know what Aries rules within your chart because that's where Chiron is currently trend, trend, uh, sitting, like where it's transiting. I'd also like to see if it's directly in any type of relationship with your natal planets. If not, that's totally fine. Don't try and fit yourself to into this experience if it's not something that's directly making sense to you right now. I think that if you, if this is directly impacting you, you would feel it. It's not gonna be, it, Chiron will make it known because it feels painful. Some of you guys, this is how you take care of yourself and how you show up for yourself. Um, for the world, how you show up for, actually show up for the world, that identity might be shifting and changing where at one point you might have been more hands-on, more in, like more seen, more in the know, like the first person to show up. And for others of you guys, you might be falling back. It's like, there's, it's really interesting. It's almost like you're redefining yourself because you may have realized that how you've shown up before in the world or your identity, um, how the world has seen you is not something that is a reflection of who you are now or who maybe you've ever been. So self-discovery at its best, self-discovery at its finest. This can also impact and bleed into all the other areas of your life. So it can fall into your health. It can fall into how your day-to-day -day routine. It can fall into the careers that is that you're now choosing, small careers, how you can converse with your siblings or your family. You might be pulling away from your family and kind of prioritizing your own self, your own needs, and maybe that's something that you've never, ever done before, but now you're like, it's time. 
On the 29th, I'm seeing a huge emphasis on health, especially when it comes to physical health and vitality, especially as the sun is going to be trining off with Mars, our action-oriented planet. So if you guys are thinking about implementing a new exercise routine or getting physically fit again, this is going to be an amazing time to do that. Mars transiting through the sign of Gemini is very open to trying new forms of physical activity and exercise. So keep your mind and your thoughts open to that. The first thing that I can think of with this, especially with Gemini, because it rules the twins, I'm almost seeing like two bicycle wheels. So let's say you're someone who would normally go running. Now all of a sudden you're thinking about instead of doing a marathon, you are now thinking about like competitive biking, something just so still physical in nature but just something totally different maybe this is like i think it's orange theory that everybody's doing where they're biking pretty aggressively um or maybe this is a more aggressive form of yoga or cathartic exercise for example if you're someone who normally does like more yin yoga or restorative yoga then you might find yourself doing hot yoga and yoga that feels more challenging to your body this is something that's like deviates from but a different extreme but still very nice still kind of sees, serves the same purpose but just falls in a different way like a different type of energy a different vibe that keeps things in life funky and fresh and new and challenges you in a new way I love that Keep your mind and eyes open. If you're waiting for any messages, conversation, text back, emails back on information, news on a job offer or a, a, anything that is information coming in, you chances are you're going to get that the 27th, 28th, 29th, 30th, and the 31st. Is there a 31st in January? Yes, there is because that's my mom's birthday. Happy birthday, mom. She's currently in Hawaii right now. So shout out to her. That's when you're going to start getting some really information news and text message developments or email developments or you might hear of um, a job off offer, some type of opportunity that may pay off to be beneficial for the near future. Definitely triggered by the new moon but can fly in from out of the blue. Totally unexpected but might even be a response to an intention that it is that you've set during the new moon that was in the sign of Aquarius last week. All right, you guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me once again. If you need me, you can find me at Bahati Life Apothecary, working my magic. Also, Queen Bee Homestead is a sponsor of today's video and podcast. So if you want all natural, high quality body butters or herbs for your chicken coop, if you have chickens like I do, you can find them there at queenbeehomesteadco.com. Until then, you guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me here on Bahati Life YouTube, Bahati Life Podcast, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.